Hello, Lisa here, and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making quilted Christmas stockings. We're going to do some applique quilt as you go and some foundation piecing to make our stockings today. I have eight different patterns in my Etsy shop that's available now. You'll find the listing and the link in the description box. Come join me and make these really fun and fast Christmas stockings. I'm going to show you how today. As we get started today, you will notice that there are detailed written instructions along with each one of the patterns. We're going to start today by doing the applique stockings. With the applique uh, stocking patterns, you have four pages of stocking templates and each one needs to be cut out directly on the line, just like I'm doing here. Now each one of these stockings, when finished, the opening will measure seven inches wide and the stocking is eight and a half inches long from the top to the toe area. If you are creating your own stencil and following along with me in this tutorial, all of your measurements will meet, need to be customized to the stocking that you are making. Once you have your templates cut out, you simply line them up and tape them together and you will create a stocking template that looks just like this. You'll also find template pieces for each one of the uh, stocking designs inside the pattern. So let's go over the materials that we need. You're gonna need some scrap fabrics and some heat and bond light, and that's for your applique. You'll need a piece of fabric for your cuff that measures eight and a half by 15 and a half inches. For your hanger, two and a half by six and a half. Two pieces of fabric for the outside of your stocking that measure 12 and a half inches by 19 and a half inches. And two pieces of lining fabric with the same measurements, 12 and a half by 19. And then you'll need a piece of batting. I am using uh, cotton batting, or you can also use 80-20 batting. We will be pressing these stockings, and that measures 12 and a half by 19 and a half. To begin, we're going to take the very front fabric of our stocking and lay that face up, pretty side up. On top of that, lay your batting. And then take your stocking template and place that directly over the two layers and pin that into place. And once it is secured into place, we're going to take some scissors and cut out our stocking shape from the two pieces of material. You can use uh, some rotary cutters to do this. I'm just using my scissors. I am much more accurate when I use my scissors. I'm gonna go around the entire perimeter of the stocking. Now keep in mind, we will be doing a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around your stocking. So this does not have to be spot on exact, but you do want it to be close to the shape of the stocking. You'll be using that as a guide when you do your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Going through and trimming everything up. And once you have everything nice and trimmed pretty, you can remove the stencil. And then you'll see you have your shape all cut out of the backing and the front of the stocking. The very next thing we're going to do is the applique portion of the stocking. Each stocking design has its own individual unique applique templates that are traceable and there are SVG files for the detailed applique pieces in each one of the patterns. 
Go ahead and fuse your uh, fusible onto the back side of your fabrics and cut out all of your pieces. Here I am lining up the toe and heel area and I will fuse those into place. If you have a cutter like a Brother Scan and Cut or Silhouette or Cricut, uh, the SVGs when uh, imported into your cutting software make the applique portion of these stockings go by so much faster. I'm going to fuse the little gingerbread man into place. Now keep in mind when when placing all of your applique templates that the cuff will come down from the top of the stocking about four to four and a half inches. So keep that in mind when lining up all of your pieces. I accidentally <laughs> cut the eyes and the buttons out of the wrong fabrics, but that's okay. I think he still looks cute. And I'm gonna go ahead and use these pieces. Just fusing everything down. I'm going to bring in the batting portion of the stocking. Now you can pin this into place. You can use uh, spray basting. Uh, today I'm going to use a glue stick and mark with the glue stick over the entire back portion of the stocking and lay that right over the batting. And dry the glue with my iron and now there's no pins to get in my way when I take this to the sewing machine to do the quilting. Now before we move on to the quilting portion, I just want to show you I have six of my stocking fronts that are ready to be quilted. We have the gingerbread man. We have the ho 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 stocking. We have holy night. And the Christmas tree. We have the Joy Stocking. And then the Snowflake. Imagine how much time the cutting machine saved me when cutting out these snowflakes. <laughs> now I'm ready to take all of these stockings over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to show you how I stitch everything down and quilt these as I go. We are at the sewing machine now. And one of the reasons why I call this quilt as you go is because as we stitch down the applique, we are also quilting our stocking all at the same time. And you can be as simple or as fancy with the stitching and quilting as you would like. So for this stocking, I chose a decorative stitch to stitch down the applique. So I'm also quilting as I go along. You could use a satin stitch or a zigzag stitch, a straight stitch, or any of the decorative stitches that come with your machine. I'm just going right along the edge, securing that into place. I'll switch around and stitch the heel of the stocking. And you could do as much or as little quilting to your stocking front as you would like. Sometimes I like to go ahead and do a stipple quilting or, or some kind of design all over the entire front of the stocking. Today I'm just going to do the applique portions of the stocking. Stitching all the way to the end. And I will bring this up close so that you could see what decorative stitch that I used. And I think that really adds a lot of character to this stocking. Next, I'm going to switch out the foot on my machine 
and do some free motion work. Now I have the free motion foot on my machine and I'm ready to stitch down the gingerbread man. I've changed the color of my thread. However, I forgot to change my bobbin thread and so I highly recommend using the same color in the bobbin as you are using in the top thread in case, like me, you have issues setting the tension exactly right. I'm just going to go around the whole perimeter of the gingerbread man stitching him down and quilting this portion of the stocking as I go along. This is a fun, fun, fun uh, process. If you have been on the fence about trying free motion quilting, I highly suggest that you give it a try. These stockings are great for beginners because uh, most of the applique pieces are fairly large. And this is a lot of fun to do. It's just like drawing with your sewing machine. Jumping from one piece to the next, I will cut those jump stitches when we're all done and just going around the perimeter of each piece. When I get to his eyes, because I use <laughs> swapped out my fabric pieces. I'm going to go ahead and add some pupils just to fill in some of that empty space and turn it into a happy mistake. <laughs> I will do this for all of my stockings and then we're going to do the candy cane stockings together. Now we'll begin piecing together our candy cane striped stocking. It comes in four pieces just like the other templates and you'll tape those together. We're going to bring in our piece of batting and notice we don't have a front fabric for this stocking. We're going to actually make that together during this process. After taping your templates together, pin your template to your batting and secure that in place and then go all the way around and trim away your batting to the stocking shape. Once you have all the batting trimmed away, we're going to go ahead and pre-fold our stocking template directly on the stitching lines. Those are the diagonal lines in between all of the numbers. And uh, try not to get confused by the straight numbers that go straight through the center of the stocking. That can be a little bit confusing but that's where we taped our template together. I like to begin by folding my pieces to the back and that just helps me uh, fold a little bit more accurately on the lines, but then I will flip my template over and fold or refold all of my lines to the front. Once all of my lines have been folded, I will align the template back with the batting and with a marker that does not bleed through your fabrics, you're going to lift each, each position and draw a line directly onto your batting and that will be your stitching lines. We won't be sewing through any paper and we won't have any paper to remove once we're done. And you'll see how I do that as we go along. Pardon the motorcycle that's going down the street. <laughs> See, we just fold up the edge and mark each sewing line from the bottom all the way up to the top.
once we have all of our lines marked, we can come in with our strips of fabric. And I have cut my strips to two and a half inches wide. That works perfectly for this pattern. And we're gonna begin in position number one. As I go along, I'm just trimming my strips. You want to make sure that your strips overhang the edges of the stocking and your sewing line by at least quarter of an inch. I'm using a glue stick to keep my fabric in position and I dry the glue with a hot iron and I'm ready to add fabric number two. Flip fabric number two directly on top of fabric number one and we're going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance right along the edge of this fabric from edge to edge. I'm sewing, 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 and I'll be right back. <laughs> and once our seam is sewn, we're gonna flip open position number two. We're gonna add a little bit of glue into position number two, flip it open, and dry the glue with the iron, securing that piece into place. I'm just using an Elmer's glue stick. Pressing our seam and getting ready for fabric number three. We'll bring in fabric number three, which had a little wrinkle in it. <laughs> and we're going to line that up. and take it to the sewing machine. Fabric number three is sewn into place. I will add my glue, flip it over and finger press, and then press with the iron. Now this will be the same process repeated through all fabric positions until you have covered the entire portion of your stocking. Adding the fabrics, flipping them onto the previous fabric that you've added. Again, I'm sewing, 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 and I'll be right back. As I come back, here's piece number four. We're adding glue and flipping open. Now I will repeat this process all the way until I'm done and we'll come back after all the fabrics have been added. Once you're done adding all your fabrics, you should have something that looks a lot like this. We're gonna flip it over and use the shape of our batting and trim away all the extra little fabric bits that hang over the edges all the way around our stocking. And when we flip this over, we will reveal a pretty, pretty stocking. Now, because we are quilting this as we go, you could be done at this point, or you could come back in with any additional quilting that you want to do with a decorative stitch or a straight stitch. You could do uh, free motion quilting, all different kinds of things that you could do with this stocking. Ta-da, see how pretty that is. Imagine all of the different colorways that you could do this stocking in. Now we're gonna begin the Victorian stocking. Again, this comes in a four piece template that needs to be taped together. And we're going to go through the same motions as we did with the candy cane stocking. Folding the template directly on the stitching line and paying careful attention to try to ignore 
the lines running through the center of the stocking that we used to tape our stencil together. That can be really confusing, especially on this stocking here. Again, I'm going to go through and fold all of my stitch lines. And then I will align the batting underneath and cut out my shape. And you'll notice that uh, on the other stocking I did this first. Uh, I don't really know that it makes any difference if you cut out your batting shape before or after you fold all of your stitching lines. Again, we'll go through and cut out our stocking shape. And just like we did with the other stocking, we're going to bring in a marker and mark each one of our stitching lines according to the template. Now we can begin adding our fabric pieces. For this stocking, we're going to start down at the bottom in position number one. Each time you add a fabric piece to your stocking, you want to make sure that it overhangs the edge of your stocking and all of the perimeter sewing lines around the piece that you're adding. Now because we've marked our lines directly on the batting, it's very easy to flip everything over and refold your batting on the stitch line and trim the fabric that you're working on to a quarter of an inch next to your stitching line, just like I'm doing here. And you'll do that for each one of the pieces that you add along the way. We're going to bring in our fabric for piece number two, and I like to use my stencil to roughly cut out the shape of the piece that I'm adding. So you'll see that I do that throughout this process. Once you have your next piece, you will flip it over onto the previous piece that you've added and you will sew the stitch line that you see in between each position. Once you've sewn directly on that line, you'll add glue and flip over your fabric and press everything down. And you will follow this process all through the entire stocking. So I'm just going to bring you along as I'm working and so that you can see how everything comes together. This stocking is probably my favorite one out of all of them. Um, I've always been a fan of uh, Victorian style quilts and clothing, and uh, I've always loved crazy quilts. Some of the very first quilts that I ever made were crazy quilts, and uh, I still have one of them, and it's in my living room. Remembering to press as you go along. And you can trim your fabrics also as you move along in the progress of your stocking. So what's really fun about uh, this style of stocking also is that you can add all kinds of decorative trim. You could add embroidery, hand embroidery. You could add monograms, buttons, lace, all kinds of things that you could do to really decorate this style of stocking. And I'm all about accessorizing my sewing projects. One of the things that I love about foundation piecing is that 
when you look at this finished stocking, it looks very, very complicated. Uh, it looks like it's taking a long time to make, but in actuality, it's very, very simple and pretty quick. You can see I'm not going through accurate measuring and accurate cutting. Uh, I could be a little bit haphazard and I can, uh, even though I'm using some fabrics that I bought specific for these stockings you could go through your stash and use scraps from your stash and so it's a great way to use up pieces uh, that you have that you might not uh, be able to use in your quilts and so I really love that Now there are all different kinds of ways that you can do foundation piecing. Uh, most of the time it's called foundation paper piecing. I do have some mug rugs that are foundation paper piecing, but I've never been a fan of having to rip away the paper at the end of my project. <laughs> and so alternative ways of doing foundation piecing are my favorite. So I love the quilt as you go foundation piecing it's it's super easy and it's really fast and at the end when I trim everything up I'm done I don't have to remove any kind of paper template as I finish up I will trim away all of the extra bits that hang over uh, the stocking and I will audition some laces that I have left over from some journals and I will trim those and add them to the seams that I want to uh, decorate. I'll pin them in place and I'll sew them down with a zigzag stitch. Next we're on to sewing together the body of our stockings. Now we're ready to begin sewing our stocking together. I have all of the tops all quilted and ready to go. We're going to begin by taking our first lining fabric and place that on your table, pretty side facing up. We'll take the second lining fabric and put that over top with the pretty side facing down. We'll take the back of our stocking and lay that on top of our pile with the pretty side facing up. And then we're going to take the front of our stocking and lay that face down onto our stack of fabrics. Now you can see I accidentally 
cut my back fabric a little bit smaller, but that's okay, we're gonna make it work. And we're gonna pin all of these layers together. You just wanna make sure that there's no shifting or movement of any of the layers as we go. Now I'm gonna take my pair of scissors, you could use a rotary cutter if you like, and go around and trim the lining fabrics and the back fabrics all at once, all the way around your stocking. And once you have everything trimmed, you can take this to the sewing machine and you'll start sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance from the top of one side of the stocking all the way around the perimeter of the stocking until you get to the top of the next side. And remember to do a back stitch when you start and stop. I am back from sewing all the way around my stocking. The next thing I'm going to do is take a pair of scissors and make small little clips along the curvy edges of my stocking and that will just help everything lay nice and flat. Make sure you don't clip into your stitching. Now I'm about to goof up for just a second. <laughs> and accidentally pull this the wrong way. So you'll see me realize that right about here. <laughs> so I'm gonna stuff everything back. Now the right way to turn your stocking inside out is in between the front and the back of the stocking. Reach in, grab the toe area, and pull everything right side out. And once you have it like this, you can stick your hand in and run your fingers along all of your curvy seams and poke everything out. Flatten out the stocking and once you have it where it's all nice and pretty, you want to take this to the pressing board and press all the way around your stocking. Now we're ready to make the cuff of our stocking. Again, if you're using your own stencil that you've created, you will need to redesign the measurements and you can simply do that by measuring across the opening, doubling that number and adding half an inch. We're gonna fold the sh two short sides together with the pretty sides facing each other and sew a quarter inch seam al allowance along the short edge, just like I've done here. And now we can fold our fabric with the right side facing out and matching up the raw edges, basically folding our cuff in half with the pretty side facing out. I think this is probably the hardest part of making the stocking. I always have to fiddle with this until it decides it wants to behave right. <laughs> Once everything is nice and flat, make sure the, the seam is on the side and press everything nice and flat. Once it's pressed, we're gonna bring over the stocking and open it up and in between your two lining fabrics, we're going to insert the cuff with the folded edge in first inside the stocking matching up the side seams of the stocking and the cuff 
and aligning the raw edges of the cuff with the stocking. Then we're going to open everything up to the middle and we're going to pin all the way around the top of our stocking. Once this is pinned, we can go on and make the hanger for our stocking. Now we're ready to make our stocking hanger. We have our little piece of fabric and we're going to fold this in half with the pretty side facing out and give that a press. This gives us a center mark. We're going to open up the fabric and fold the long edges towards the center mark that we've just created. And we're going to press each side just like this. This is going to give us very nice, pretty finished edges of our stocking hanger. Folding up the second edge to the center and pressing. Once that's pressed, we can refold on the original fold in half one more time. Press that and now we're ready to take that to the sewing machine and sew right next to the edge all the way down. Again, I'm sewing, 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 and I'll be right back. <laughs> Now we can take our hanger and fold it over to create our loop. We're going to bring in our stocking, fold our hanger over, and we're going to insert the hanger with the loop in first between the cuff and the lining of our stocking. And we're doing this on the back of our stocking. So there's the cuff and the lining. We're just going to put that in there and hold it in place with a pin. Now we take this to the sewing machine and sew with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the opening of our stocking. And now for the big reveal, what we've all been waiting for. <laughs> to finish our stocking, we simply reach into the stocking and grab the cuff and fold that over the top edge of our stocking. It might help to grab onto the hanger and run your fingers inside the cuff along the top edge of your stocking. It'll all fall into position and this cuff really finishes off the stocking so perfectly. You'll notice the inside of the stocking, you won't see any unfinished or raw edges. Everything is nice and perfect. <laughs> you can hear my daughter's bird. And there's our stocking. I have had so much fun showing you how to make these lined quilted stockings. I hope that uh, you were able to sit down and use up some of your scraps and make some special stockings for your house or for your family and friends. I would love to see pictures of your stockings. If you want to find me on Facebook, the link will be in the description box below. Thank you so much.